Next, we're going to show that anything I can do with a non-deterministic finite state automaton is also going to be something I can do with a deterministic finite state automaton. So that they're equivalent models of computing. So to do this, we have to do two steps. We have to show that anything I can do with a deterministic finite state automaton, I can also do with a non-deterministic finite state automaton. So we want to know, can we convert a deterministic finite state automaton into a non-deterministic one? Does anybody have any ideas for how we can do this? Yeah, so a deterministic finite state automaton is a special case, a non-deterministic finite state automaton. So every deterministic finite state automaton is already a non-deterministic one. Non-determinism was basically a relaxation of what our automaton could do. So a deterministic one just chooses not to use all of its power, um, but it still totally makes sense as a non-deterministic one. It just didn't use the non-determinism available to it. So every deterministic finite state automaton is already a non-deterministic one, no conversion necessary. It's kind of like saying, can you convert any circuit that uses ors and nots into one that uses ands, ors, and nots? Like, well, yeah, it already is, because if we were allowed to use ors and nots before, and now you're letting me use ands, well, I didn't have to use the ands for it to be an and or not circuit. So every DFA, that's already an NFA. So we know that NFAs are at least as powerful as DFAs. It turns out, though, that any NFA can be converted into a DFA. And the strategy we can use for this is very similar to that cross product construction that we did in last class. So last class, we had this cross-product construction where we said we could make some new machine that played the role of two other machines looking at the same input at the same time, kind of in lockstep, by saying that in this new machine, every state was going to represent a pair of states, where the first one came from the first machine, the second one came from the second machine. So we're going to have a similar strategy to that, where we have super states, where each state is going to represent multiple states. From, from the other machine, where in this case, each of those super states is going to be a subset of states. Yes. Yes, this is just the power set. So we call this one the power set construction, in fact. Also, sometimes the subset construction. Our strategy for this time is we know, even though our non deterministic finite state automaton can be in a set of states at a time, it can only be in one set of states at a time. So if we have states representing sets of states, then I can only be in one of those super states at a time. So we should be able to make it a DFA, a deterministic one. So that's the idea. How can we figure out how to make being in one state represent being in several states? And the way we're going to do that is by saying each state represents a subset of states. So let's look at an example of this. So here's that example we just had. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build an automaton where I have one state for every different set of states I could be in. So in this case, I began with a three-state automaton, and now I need one state for every subset of those three states, so I should have eight states if I did this right. So that's the size of the power set of a set of size three. With three states, I should have two to the three states after I do the power set. So I have two to the three, which is eight states down here. These are the states that my DFA is going to have. So now what we can do is we can sort of just trace through what this non-deterministic finite state automaton is going to do, keeping in mind that now we have one state representing a set of states. What state in this new machine is going to be my start state? What state in this new machine will be my start state? Yeah, so start is going to be my start state. So in this case, it's going to be my start state plus any states I could reach from my start state without using input is going to be my start state. I can't reach any states besides my start state without using input. So in this case, it is just start. So this one is my start state. Before we've read any input, I'm only in one state, that being the start state. What happens if I get a zero? If I'm in start and I get a zero, what happens? Where do I go? Yeah, I, I'm only in the start state. So on zero, start transitions back to start. What happens if I get a one? Yeah, so the start state stays in the start state, and it moves to 1, so I end up with start 1. Okay, so now if I'm in start 1 and I get a 0, 
then one goes to next and start goes to start. So we end up in start next if we get a zero. If I'm in start one and I get a one, start goes to start, start goes to one, one goes to next. So we're in start one next and we get a one. If I'm in start next and I get a zero, so start next and I get a zero, start goes to start and next doesn't go anywhere. If I'm in start next and I get a one, start goes to start and one, next doesn't go anywhere. So I go to start one on a one. And then if I'm in start one next and I get a zero, and then start goes to start, one goes to next, next doesn't go anywhere. So on a zero, I end up in start next. Then if I get a one, start goes to start and one, one goes to next, next doesn't go anywhere. So I end up in the same place. Which ones are my final states? Yes. Yeah, so anything with next is going to be a final state. So this one's a final state, and this one's a final state. And then all of the other states I couldn't reach from the start state. You could leave them in, you could remove them. It's not going to impact what your automaton does. So this is the idea for how we can take any non-deterministic automaton and convert it into a deterministic one. Yeah. It's perfectly fine to say, all right, this one's a final state, and this one's a final state. You would need to add transitions to this to make it a DFA if you're going to leave the states in there. Because the rule was for every state and every character, you need to have a next state. These states that I've just left empty, they don't have next states for any character. So I need to fill those in for it to properly be a DFA. But you could. It wouldn't change what the, what it, what the automaton did for any input because you couldn't ever reach them. But it doesn't hurt to have them either. Does this make sense? Cool. This is now me just drawing that out by hand in case I made mistakes in the last slide. Uh, it should be the same thing. If we wanted to represent this symbolically, if I had a non-deterministic finite state automaton where I had states, an alphabet, transitions, a start state, some final states. So if this was my non-deterministic one, then with my deterministic one, my set of states becomes the power set of my original set of states. Because of that, because my states become the power set of states, we typically call this the power set construction. So we're doing this construction where our set of states becomes the power set of our previous set of states. So we call it the power set construction. Our alphabet doesn't change. We're going to end up with new versions of all the other stuff, though. So the first thing we're going to look at for the other stuff is which state is going to be our start state. Well, our start state is going to be the set of states. So each state is a set of states, remember. So our start state needs to be a set of states. Our start state needs to be the set of states that contains the original start state, as well as anything I can reach from the start state without consuming input. So a set of states defined by the start state and anything reachable from it without using any input. So this delta Q naught epsilon says, look at the transition function in that DFA. Look at every place it goes to on the empty string, that is without consuming any input. So the state representing that set of states is my new start state. For instance, if this is state one, and then I had state two there, and then state three on like zero or something like that, then in this case, my start state would be the state representing the states one and two. So if our automaton looks something like that, then when we did our power set construction, our start state would be the state representing the set one and two. Our final states are states representing any set of states that contains a final one. So our final states is the set of states from the power set. So the set of super states such that one of the states in the super state was a final one. So all states with a final state in them. So all states with a final state in them. And then my transition function basically says, if I'm in some set of states and I'm going to transition on some character, then I want to be in the state that's just the union of all those transitions, the union of the states that any of those states got me to. So transition to the state set of everything any current state transitions to. So this is just the symbolic version of this. If you understand it enough that you could code it without knowing what all these crazy Greek symbols mean, then that is totally okay. 
but I know that there are some people who prefer to see it in the mathematical precision like this.